Hi guys, you're about to watch my Bookmas Day 3 video. I meant to get this particular video up much sooner this sooner sooner this month, but life, you know, what are you gonna do? So I thought I would bring it to you as Bookmas Day 3 and I hope that you all really enjoy it. Alright, on to the video now. Bye! Thanks for watching. Hi guys, Oshale here and welcome back to my channel, Oshi Reads. And in today's video, I'm going to be wrapping up all of the books that I read in November and talking about them. So I read 18 books in November, but for the sake of time, I will just be talking about the ones that really stood out to me, the ones that I especially enjoyed, that rated highly with me. So I have compiled a list of about 10 books that I will be talking about with you today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So as I previously stated, I read 18 books in November and the 10 books I have to share with you today are primarily new adult books and most of these authors I believe are either self-published or independently published. So the first book I want to talk about is, is the first book in a series, the Barlow Sisters series. And this book is called Curveball by Jordan Ford. I rated this book three stars and I will definitely need to make an updated video on how I rate books, but I am primarily rating them on enjoyment as of right now. So I rated it three stars, which for me means it was a really good solid book and I enjoyed it. And this book I will have to depend on my Goodreads because I have forgotten some of these synopsises. But in this book it features the Barlow family which has three sisters, two twins and a younger sister. And their father has basically packed them all up from the home where they lived their whole lives, the town where they've grown up, where they have all their friends. They're super happy in school. They're part of a baseball team. No, not softball baseball. These three girls are very good at baseball and they're a part of their high school team and the two older sisters, the twins, are getting ready to go off to college soon. They're coming into their senior year and then the younger sister I believe is a freshman in high school. I believe. So these these girls are still in high school so as I was saying the father is basically moving them to this small town that they've never heard of far away. The sisters are very upset the mother is very upset. Everyone's upset. No and now they're going to have to move to this small town and start all over. Their father is a policeman and he is going to this town because an old school friend of his reached out to him and the school friend is the mayor of this small town and said, hey, I really need your help. There's an opening for the chief of police in my town and I really need your help because we need to clean up the town. You know, there's this gang that's like completely ruined the town and running the town and I need your help cleaning it up. So he accepts the job and that's why he's moving his family down there. This town is very interesting. It's a very small town. It's kind of derelict. Um, this, the town is split in half. It has, you know, the seedy side of town which is run by this one crime family. And that side of town is very broken down, very seedy, it's, it's, it's dingy, um, the infrastructure is falling apart, all the businesses have been driven out due to this crime family basically harassing and, um, I guess, blackmailing and bribing people and getting them to kind of leave through scare tactics. And then you have the normal side of a town where, you know, the families live in this town and it ranges from, I guess, upper middle class you know, a very few percentage of, percentage of upper class and then just normal people. So Maddie Barlow is the sister that we focus on in this novel and she's used to being very in control. She considers herself to be the caretaker of all of her sisters. She's kind of the peacemaker. She's the one that looks after them all and just makes sure that everyone is okay. And she sees herself as the one that keeps her sisters together and keeps them encouraged and uplifted. So of course after the father announces that they're moving, she kind of takes it upon herself the responsibility to make sure that her sisters have a smooth and easy transition to this new town. So the father kind of makes a deal with the mayor that the girls can join the baseball team. Now there have never been any girls on this particular baseball team so of course you have the boys in this town in this particular high school are completely just flabbergasted and against these girls joining. They kind of make their lives a living hell for a little while 
because they join this baseball team and they're very much underestimated and even sabotaged at certain points in the novel. Then of course you have Holden Carter who is our male protagonist and he is the captain of the team of course and at face value he comes off very cocky and arrogant and him and Maddie immediately don't get along and they butt heads and they just hate each other. Now I will say that he ha he does do some kind of awful things to her that you know her opinion of him is definitely justified but throughout the novel they get to know each other a little bit better there is also a mystery going on within this novel because there's some thievery going on in their high school and things are being stolen left and right and nobody can find the culprit and even the police forest has gotten involved and they are also trying to find a thief as well and right now the crime family has um one of their own attending the high schools is, is a young man and he's being blamed right now for all the thievery that's going on but they don't have any proof so you also have that side of the novel where they're trying to find out who's stealing all their stuff especially when all the stuff from the baseball team their new equipment gets stolen so that's kind of a mystery running out throughout the novel and they're trying to find out who's stealing everything and then you also have the main storyline of not only are the Barlow family trying to adjust to this new town called Armitage by the way and the father's trying to clean, clean up the crime and then you have the mayor and by the way Holden Carter the male protagonist is the son of the mayor so you have that kind of thing and then um maddie and holden are trying to get to know each other and she's trying to dig deeper beneath the surface of him being all arrogant and jerky and you know and all that so they're kind of getting to know each other and of course they are going to fall in love and all that good stuff so it was a really good high school romance with some deeper elements um it really had some good lessons about how people wear masks because in high school i remember being young and wearing a mask just to survive and you know it's it's not like you don't want to be genuine and it's not that you want to be fake but at that age there's so much pressure and there's so much peer pressure societal pressure you know you want to fit in you want to have friends you want to have an easy basically life while you're in high school it's already hard enough with all the this testing and everything and feeling like if you don't succeed in this one part of your life the rest of your life is basically going to be a failure because you're not gonna be able to get to college and all these other things so there's already so much going on on that age and you throw in the hormones and you, you throw in like the the you know the relationship between the sexes and the, and the male female dynamics going on and so I really liked that this novel not only reflected this family drama that's going on and the relationship between these three sisters which gets very complicated but it also talks about what it's like in high school when you have to wear a mask just to survive and things are really really hard and you just don't know you know how you can be yourself and still like be cool or you know fly under the radar or even just survive you know by being a normal person and not being targeted so i enjoyed this book and i gave it three stars so moving right along to the next book <laughs> oh my god i just realized it's 14 minutes in and i've only talked about the first book what is my life Next book I want to talk about is 10,000 Points of Light by Michelle Warren and this book I especially enjoyed because it really explored the topic of amnesia and what it's like when you wake up and half of your life actually not even half of your life all of your life is gone you can't remember anything from the past you have no idea what's going on and that's what ha happens to our male female protagonist in this novel she basically has divided her life into two parts the before where she has no clue what happened before she woke up in the hospital and you know has no memory of her past and the present where she's basically having to rediscover herself rebuild her life find out who she is what she likes and basically navigate in this new world where she has no memories and so she feels like she has no anchor and she has no foundation and she's trying to figure it all out so basically she woke up in the hospital and she knows that a traumatic event happened to her and she kind of knows what the event is because she still has nightmares and flashbacks she went home to live with her family but they were very stifling because they're a very affluent family so she ran away from them and moved to another town to live on her own and kind of figure out her life on her own and she basically when she woke up she had to learn how to do everything all over again and go to rehab okay so her name is kate london and she moves to chicago that's the town <laughs> that she moved to and so she's rebuilding her life she takes on this job and she moves into this apartment and her and her neighbor have a very interesting relationship he's kind of the maintenance guy of the apartment and she's always having things break and things go wrong in her apartment and it, the novel kind of chronicles her journey of self-discovery rediscovering herself perhaps you know trying to get her memory back because that is her focus but at the same time she's dealing with the traumatic event that happened to her so she has post-traumatic stress disorder for real so trigger warnings for those that deal with any type of violence trauma and PTSD um, I just want to put that out there right now definitely a trigger warning for people 
people dealing with those issues. So her and the male protagonist, who is Evan Wade, are kind of developing this relationship. She's definitely very sexually attracted to him, and she is fighting it, but then she gives into it. She's also trying to go out of her comfort zone because she's kind of become this like ice queen because she doesn't really know who she is. It's a very interesting novel, and I feel like a synopsis doesn't do it justice. Um, Michelle Warren does a really good job of kind of exploring all these different layers within the novel and beneath the surface of just the synopsis that I'm desperately trying to give to you but it's not good enough but anyways I highly recommend this one I gave it four stars I really really enjoyed it and I really enjoyed the journey that Kate and Evan took together and there is definitely a really cool twist so I don't want to say anything else but I definitely recommend this one I want to talk about is Brick, which is an urban paranormal romance, and this book is by Natavia. So this author just goes by Natavia, and this is another another one of like those urban books that I was reading. I hate that title. Um, I will link the video right now that I'm referring to when I talk about this author and also this genre of books. And I really enjoyed this one. I hadn't read an urban paranormal romance before with black characters and this was delicious. Now I will say that um, if you do decide to pick this one up you will have to push through it. I would say the first six or seven chapters there are some grammatical errors and some spelling errors so if you're one of those people where that's a pet peeve for you then I would say just just just, just hang on because the storytelling is really good. Um, I will say it is one of those over-the-top kind of cheesy type of romances but the way it's written and the things that are happening are so interesting that you can't help but continue. The storyline in itself is very fascinating. It's basically about a woman who has kind of this dead-end job that she does not like and she's basically just gritting her her teeth and trying to get through it and her best friend works there as well in this office. I think it's a dental office and she's the administrative assistant. She's overworked and underappreciated and her best friend who works at the office as well is the janitor and so that's how they met and they became close and so she's also having you know man troubles as well and basically what ends up happening is she goes through a heartbreak and then one day as she's just at work she makes a wish on a star um, I want to say a couple years later um, I would just say a man falls out of the sky and crushes her car so yes this does have to do with aliens and other planets and if you can't guess the man is an alien from another planet from another another race of beings and another really interesting mythology that is a part of this book is the man is a gargoyle yes do you guys remember that show gargoyles i don't know if y'all some of y'all are too young but there was this cartoon named gargoyles and it was my absolute favorite for a period of time when I was growing up as a teen, I loved that cartoon so much. So reading this book really gave me the feels because I kept thinking about that cartoon that I love so much. And I just really enjoyed this read. It was just, ah, oh, I loved it. I, I just became so lost and immersed in this world. I gave this one four stars. I really enjoy Natavia's writing. Once I got past the grammatical and spelling errors, she definitely needs a better editor, but the storytelling was on point and I recommend it. If you can get past the grammatical and sparing spelling errors, you are in for a treat. I want to talk about is called Still and this is the second book in a two book series that I began earlier this year. The first book is called Grip and so this was the second book that I read called Still and the book is by Kennedy Ryan. Now Kennedy Ryan is one of the authors that I discovered this year that has quickly become an auto buy author for me. I am obsessed with her now. I've actually read everything that she has out so far and um, Grip was the first book I read by her and I quickly fell in love and I just uh, I'm obsessed with her but to make a long story short since this is the second book in a series I'm not going to talk about what happens in this, in this book but I will tell you about Grip. So Grip is a story about a young boy um, growing up and he grows up on in the hood basically and he sees some really hard and horrific things happen but he completely beats all the statistics that, and, and you know he gets out of the hood and he basically makes his way into becoming the next up-and-coming huge hip-hop star like think about like a young Jay-Z or a young Kanye West that's what I felt when I was reading this novel or maybe even Chance the Rapper but I really enjoyed watching Grip's story and he's a poet really at heart and he just he, he raps poetry and the level of just like amazingness that were were the raps in this book it, it is so I can't believe Kennedy Ryan came up with these raps like they're so good and he's kind of a social conscious rapper as well he talks about you know the black community and the, you know the the topic of police police brutality is really the focal point in grip and is really discussed um, of course there's also a romance as well there's kind of a forbidden romance because it's an interracial romance so I will say no more but I would just say that um, let me just say this 
Griff is one of my favorite reads of this year. I gave it five stars and still did not disappoint. Book two was amazing. So I highly recommend this series. Definitely go pick these books up. I cannot talk them up enough. I will definitely be talking way more about this in my um, favorite books of 2017 video. So if you want to know more, you should stay tuned for that video. I want to talk about is a book that moved me so deeply it was just an amazing reading experience because it was completely unexpected and this book is Thicker Than Water by Dylan Allen and this book really talked about immigration and illegal immigration and illegal aliens and the DREAM Act which to be honest with you when all that went down earlier this year with Trump I didn't really understand what it meant and this book moved me so deeply I just knew that I was I was definitely against dreamers being deported. I was against, you know, this this le piece of legislation that allows them not only to succeed and go to school, but also to be able to find jobs and to be able to, you know, eventually work their ways to becoming, you know, legal citizens of this country. You know, I was definitely against that being taken away from them and for them being deported to countries where most of them have never even been to in their lives. You know, their parents brought them here or they were born here and it's not their fault that they are considered illegal, even though personally I believe that human beings cannot be illegal but we're not going to go into that because this is not a political channel and I will definitely block and delete you if you have any hateful things to say I will take any dissent or um, debate or you know I, I'm happy to debate with people and I'm happy to talk about to people who have different opinions than mine in a respectful manner but if you have hateful comments to say you will be blocked and deleted just want to put that in there because I am not playing today honey mm -mm. but um moving on to talk, to talk about thicker than water I I I get emotional when I think about this book because <sighs> there's nothing like reading to really put you into the mind, heart, and soul of a character to make you understand something that you may have been against or may not even even fully understood. And I want to make a full video about this book, so I'm not going to say too much, but um, I will just say definitely go pick it up. It'll be linked to the down bar, and, and a full video review of this particular novel is coming very soon. Because by the way. Because I read that book and I fell in love with Dylan Allen, I went and picked up her other book series that she has out. The first book in the series is called Rise and this is the series and I read the first two books. So I read Rise and I read, read Remember and this series follows um, sisters. I believe there are three of them or maybe four, I can't quite remember. And they're products of an interrelation, interracial relationship. Their mother is African and their father is from the Middle East and something really traumatic happens to them when they're children. They're living this idyllic perfect you know life, their, their parents love each other, everything's going great and then all of a sudden one day their father um, is becomes a part of basically the collapse of this company. I, I want to say it was Enron or it was something that like, took after Enron and what happened with the insider trading and like you know people's money being embezzled and all that and He's not exactly implicated, but he disappears. And so the FBI are kind of looking for him and these these girls' lives and their mother's life is never the same. The girls have to be basically taken into witness protection. They move away, they change their names, they start a whole new life. So this fast forwards years later and, 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 and each book basically follows one of the sisters. In the youngest sister, Addie, and I would say her father's disappearance and subsequent kind of alluded to guilt because of how it all went down and him disappearing and the FBI looking for him. I would say she was the most affected by her father's disappearance in a negative light. And she has taken the second half of her life to basically shun everything that was her father. She's very bitter, she's very angry, and she's become very closed off and cold. She not only, like, goes away to college, but she moves to a whole another continent. She moves to London and she's a lawyer now and she just has a job where she's in control and she doesn't want anyone to know who she really is because what happened with the scandal made national headline news. So she's really embraced her new identity, her new name. She doesn't want anyone to know who she is. She's completely closed off and she's just kind of living under the radar as this lawyer and just trying to work her way up the corporate ladder in, in, in this law firm and just trying to be completely separate person from who she perceives the daughter of that scandalous man to be. And so she meets this guy named Simon and from the second she meets him, she really like is drawn to him and they're a mixed person which is really cool so they have that in common. But Simon comes from a very hard background and you know it just follows their journey together, them getting to know each other, him breaking down her walls. It's a romance so it definitely follows their romantic journey but there's so much more going on in the plot that it keeps it interesting beyond just the romance. But um, I don't want to say too too much because I didn't know too much about the series going in, but I gave this book four stars, and then when I went to re read the second book in the series, Remembrance, which follows one of her sisters, her older sister. So, 
This book, remember, uh, follows her older sister, Millicent, or Millie for short, and Millie has a really interesting life. She basically, in their before life, before the scandal, when they had this perfect life and they were, you know, everything was great, Millie was in high school, I believe it was her senior year of high school, and she was in love with this boy, and they were best friends. It was a best friends to lovers type situation, high school sweethearts. They found her soulmate, and then all of a sudden, overnight, the FBI had to move them, and they had to go into, like, not necessarily witness protection, but they had to change their name and they couldn't contact anyone from their past life. But of course, Millie breaks that rule and once they get settled in their new home, she... But of course, Millie breaks that rule and once they get settled in their new home and in their new identities, Millie quickly calls Dean, who is her boyfriend that she's in love with and who is her soulmate. And Dean's mother picks up. And Dean's mother has never liked Millie. But um, what Millie and Dean had in common... Um, they had a lot of things in common, but one of the things they had in common is both of their fathers worked for this company. And so when Millie's, um, when Dean's mother picks up the phone and answers Millie's call, she kind of goes off on Millie and says, you know what, Dean never wants to see you again, he wants, never wants to speak to you again, and kind of blames Millie's father for this tragic incident that occurs, and I don't want to talk about it because I think it's a spoiler. And so Millie's completely heartbroken, devastated. She gets off that phone call and she thinks Dean wants nothing to do with her. So just she moves on with her life, you know, and she actually gets married to someone else and has a child. And basically when we start the novel, her marriage is falling apart. In the first couple, like in the first couple pages, her husband basically walks out on her and says he has someone else and he's been cheating on her and her life completely just crumbles around her. And she has to rebuild herself back up because she got married when she was like, 18 or 20 really young to this other guy because she was looking for security and stability and you know each of these sisters in this series from what I'm seeing reacts to their father's disappearance and the scandal in a different way and Addie the, the sister in the first book Rise reacted by basically becoming closed off cold bitter and wanting to control everything in her life and, and wanting to be perfect and this perfect citizen and this perfect lawyer and this perfect and Millie reacted by just wanting to go and find security find this guy who she's like this is a safe guy okay he's not the love of my life but he's a safe dude I just want to build a safe life and have everything be safe and comfortable and secure so it's I'm I haven't read the third book yet I don't think it's out so it'll be interesting to see how that third sister reacts and you know what she does but I highly recommend these two books and this series. I gave this book four stars as well. And of course, Dean comes back into her life, by the way. I just have to add that in. It is a second chance romance. So I'm not going to spoil how she and Dean come into contact again. You just have to read the book and find out. The next book I want to talk about is called Forever Right Now by Emma Scott. I gave this book five stars because it was just so good. Like, I can't... Oh, it was so good. You know those books that when you're done reading, you're just like... That was perfection. That's how I felt after I put down Forever Right Now. And Forever Right Now, we follow Darlene Montgomery. And Darlene has been through it, y'all. I love Darlene so much because she's not this perfect female protagonist. She has completely been through hell and back. She's basically a recovering drug addict and she is used to people not believing her because of how she was when she was using. She's used to people thinking that she's going to let them down. She's used to people thinking she's a failure. She deals with her family not trusting her, not believing in her, and always like, you know, feeling like she's gonna mess things up. So she's in recovery and she basically, in the first few chapters of the book, moves to San Francisco. She used to live in New York, but things don't work out. I won't spoil that and she moves to San Francisco in the first couple chapters of the book because she just needs a fresh start she needs to start over and what I will say is Darlene is a former dancer and I, I, I feel weird saying that because I feel like once a dancer always a dancer right and those of you who have danced before can understand this like dancing is not just like what you do it, it's kind of who you are like you're either a dancer or you're not a dancer you know and so even though she used to dance, I still consider her a dancer. And she's rediscovering her gift and rediscovering like her love of dance. And a lot of this book has to do with that and it is so beautiful. And maybe it's because I'm an artist myself and I understand what it, what it means to like lose that part of yourself through, you know, circumstances of just life and trying to find your way back to it and how it's so precious to you and how it's so fragile, that journey to rediscover it and how it means the world to you to be able to do this thing that you just feel like you were born to do. So that's kind of what Darlene is going through on top of her being a recovering drug addict and just trying to get through each day, one day at a time. You know, she goes to the meetings 
and she has a sponsor and she's trying to do all the right things and do everything appropriately she basically moves into this apartment where she's subletting because the person who used to live there is going to be gone for a certain amount of time so she kind of lucks out with this apartment and of course she meets a boy and this boy is going through hell like he's going through a lot basically what happens is he was a normal college student you know trying to get through law school and then one day he's having a raging party and this girl knocks on the door and he opens the door and he notices that he knows this girl and it's a girl that he had a one night stand with like months ago like maybe 10 12 months ago and the girl has a baby with her yeah I think you guys know where this is going so the girls just like is like hey and he's just looking at the girl looking at the baby looking at the girl looking at the baby and he was in the middle of throwing a hero's I think it was a hero, superheroes and villains party, so he's dressed in costume, he's drunk, and this girl shows up. Long story short, the girl leaves the baby with him and disappears and is never to be heard from again. So long story short, the girl leaves the baby with him and is never to be seen or heard from again. So you think. You gotta read the book to find out what happens. But basically you have these two characters and of course their paths cross and they are fighting it with everything in them in the sense of them getting involved because he had to move out of his apartment, take the baby with him that he is now raising as his own while he's still trying to go to law school and pass the bar. And then you have her looking for a new start, trying to get her dancing back and her, and, and just trying to discover, rediscover herself and prove to herself that she can do this and, you know, going to her AA meetings and just trying to get her life back and trying to get the trust back in the people that she loves for them to trust her and believe in her again and she also is trying to believe in herself again so they both separately have a lot going on in their lives and it seems like the worst possible time for them to get involved and for them to fall in love but of course that's what happens and it's such a beautiful story about redemption and second chances and overcoming the odds and about how God puts people in your lives for a reason and how when you truly meet the person that you're meant to be with they're there to help you they're there to show your burdens and they're there to make your life better even though you can't see it at the time and it might seem like the worst possible timing in the world and maybe you weren't even looking for love but how that love can truly be a blessing in your life and can really help you become a better person and can enrich your life in every possible way even though you can't see it at the time but if you have the courage and if you have the resilience to open your heart and to let that love in how much not only you will be changed for the better but your life and others lives around you that you impact will be changed for the better as well so five stars highly recommend in the same vein also by emma scott is rush a book that i just love and you know i just want to kind of speed this along so i'm just going to give a very brief synopsis basically in this boy in <laughs> in this book you have another romance it's a boy meets girl type of situation you have this girl who is really just trying to hold it together she lives in this apartment in new york she's basically lives in a closet her roommates are annoying she's not friends with any of them they're inconsiderate she doesn't want to live with them but she has to do what she has to do she graduated from juilliard she plays the violin and she is a child prodigy turned musical genius so everyone says she apparently is just so amazing and such a brilliant violinist but something happened to her to make her lose her love of playing where she literally has no desire to play anymore. So she graduates from Juilliard and instead of like all of her other friends going on auditions and you know trying to get into orchestras and trying to do all these career advancing things, she basically just can't play anymore and she's just working this dead end job at a restaurant and she's working another second job and she's just trying to survive in New York. She's trying to pay her rent and she's just trying to keep her head above water. Then you have this incident that happens where she basically gets an opportunity to become a personal assistant to a young man who is now blind. So our female protagonist, her name is Charlotte Conroy, and our male protagonist, his name is Noah Lake. And Noah Lake basically acquires Charlotte as his personal assistant because he has been through a horrific tragedy. He used to be a extreme sports athlete, photographer, and journalist. That is a mouthful. But basically he worked for this magazine where he did all these extreme sports and then he wrote about it and he wrote articles about it and took photos of what he was doing. I'm talking about like cliff diving and splunking and you know deep sea diving and all that stuff. Scaling mountains. He used to do it all. But something went wrong on one of his excursions and he almost died and when he woke up not only did he wake up with all of these scars and just his body being bro broken he woke up blind 
and he had to relearn everything. He had to go to rehab, relearn all his motor skills, and the doctors told him maybe your sight will come back, but then eventually they had to tell him, I'm so sorry, your sight will never come back. So he's very bitter. He lives alone in this home. He comes from a very wealthy family, so they have, given, they have given him this whole apartment, and he's driven everyone away, and he basically just lives in the dark, and he's bitter, and he's angry, and he's sad, and Charlotte becomes his personal assistant. So through music, I would say music is what breaks down his barriers, but they do form this amazing relationship that basically brings Noah back from the brink of death because he's not really living. He's so bitter and he's so shut down from what happened to him. He's not really alive anymore. He is spiritually, emotionally, and mentally dead. And he is, you know, in a dark, dark place. And so Charlotte brings him back to life and he helps her as well. He helps to give her her music back and her love of music and her and the inspiration to play again and, and to get over the tragedy that happened to him. So you have these two characters who have had horrible things happen that have turned them into who they, you know, turned them into different people and it's how they find the way back to themselves and how they find their way to each other. So I gave this book four stars. I really enjoyed it. I think I'm going to add Emma Scott to my auto buy list. And last but not least, I picked up the fifth book in a series that I have been reading for a little over a year now, maybe about a year. And this series follows the Landry family where I believe they have four boys and two girls, two twin girls. And this is the fifth and last book in this particular series. And this book series is the Landry family series by Adriana Locke. And it is called Swink. And this follows one of the twin sisters who is basically Little Miss Debutante, okay? She is the Little Miss Perfect in their family that is a very affluent family, by the way. And they are kind of pillars of their society. And so this particular twin sister, her name is Camilla Landry. And she follows in her mother's footsteps in the sense that she just loves to portray herself as, you know, a lady about town. She loves working with different charities and holding charity balls. She's very sophisticated and put together. Kind of that stereotype of that rich girl that is very just like, oh yes, I throw charity balls and I'm very put together and I wear this, you know, beautiful, sophisticated outfits and go on red carpets and, you know, all that. And it basically chronicles her relationship with this guy who is the polar opposite of her and yet they have fallen in love with each other. His name is Dominic Hughes and he comes from a pretty rough background and the way they met is really interesting and unexpected and they start this relationship that they aren't trying to put a label on and they're kind of trying to avoid the fact that they have fallen for each other but that's what's happened and I like this book because it takes a different take on a romance where we're not following two people meeting and like going through things, falling in love along the way and all that. We're meeting two people who are already in a relationship and they're trying to navigate that relationship based on societal expectations, family expectations, societal pressures, family pressures, just how they feel about themselves, their own self-worth. You know, when you have two people that come from such different backgrounds and you are dealing with someone who feels that they are less than because of their background and not good enough for the other person, it's interesting because that person also has to find some self-worth and find some self-love in order to be with that other person. And so you're kind of navigating this all of this with this couple and trying to watch them get to their happily ever after. You're definitely rooting for them and it's really satisfying by the end once they get it all together. But I highly recommend this series. Once again, it's the Landry series, but I'm talking so fast. The Landry series by Adriana Locke and I have enjoyed each and every one of the books following all of the siblings and um, Adriana Locke is actually starting a new series with the second twin sister. She's starting a separate series, but um, the Landry series, these five books, I really enjoyed. And this particular book, I gave four stars. Okay, so I thought that was it, but then I just found out that I actually read 20 books in November. I'm missing two books, and these are two books that I actually do want to talk about. So if you're still here at this point in the video, thank you so much. I'm so sorry this is so long. I forgot that my wrap-up videos tend to be so long because I read so much. First book I want to talk about I read really early on in the month, and this book is called Soaring by Kristen Ashley. And um, I love Kristen Ashley novels. I adore her. She's an auto-buy author for me, so I always buy everything that she comes out with. And this is one of the books that I hadn't read yet. It is a part of a series that she's doing called the Magdalene series and this is book two in the series and it basically follows a mother who is trying to win her children back. She has acted horribly in the course of her divorce from her husband and she's acted so badly that her children have actually turned her turned their backs on her and are now living with her husband and his new wife who he cheated on her with and then left her for. 
So she went off the deep end when this happened. She just did really bad things and became a really bad person. And she's trying to win them back. So she moves to this town where they live in now. She buys a house in this town. And she comes from a lot of money. So she's able to do this. And this whole book basically chronicles her trying to win her children back. Trying to regain their trust. Trying to get back into their good graces. And trying to atone for all the things that she did. And she's also trying to learn to forgive herself and love herself again. And during the course of this, she meets this guy. Her neighbor who's going through a lot himself. He just divorced from his wife. And he has to take care of his children now. Because his wife isn't alcoholic and that is the reason why they divorced and he lives across the street and they kind of form this bond and they help each other and of course he feels like he's not good enough for her because of her wealth and her status and her family background and he kind of helps her come into her own and she helps him come into his own and they're both at this crossroads kind of transformative place in both of their lives and what I love about Kristen Ashley is she writes about people who are older so her heroines tend to be in their, like, late 30s at the youngest. I think that the youngest heroine I've ever read from a Kristen Ashley novel was, like, 28. But this particular heroine is in her 40s, I think mid to late 40s, if not early 50s, and so is the male protagonist as well. So I really enjoy that about her books because you don't see that a lot. So this is definitely an adult romance, but I really enjoyed it. I gave it five stars. And another book I want to talk about is a straight-up historical romance novel and it is by one of my favorite historical romance novelists Lisa Klepis and this is the latest in a new series that she started the Revenal series and this is book three Devil in Spring and this book follows the offspring of the couple featured in Devil in Winter. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that's fine. You can definitely look this up. I will leave links below. I really enjoyed this book. It was very unconventional, especially for its time. Like I said, it's a historical romance novel, so it takes place either in Regency or Victorian England. I honestly can't remember, but one of those time periods. And it basically follows the female protagonist who is anti-marriage. She actually wants to start her own company. She has invented these board, these board games, and she wants to basically just be independent of all this whole like young lady you need to come out at this ball and choose a husband or rather let a husband choose you and just be this wallflower and, 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 and be just this matrimonial figure that doesn't do anything but breed children and you know laugh softly and, and never works too hard or breaks her sweat she definitely wants to do none of that she's a very feminist female protagonist for her time and she just wants to own her own company and make her own board games and live on her own and have her own money and so the conflict in this novel is she's put in a situation where she has to get married to the male protagonist for reasons and he basically has to convince her to marry him and he has to convince her that marrying him will be ben beneficial for her because she loses so many freedoms by marrying him by marrying him she basically, because of the time period that they're in and the way that women are treated, she's given up everything. I mean, she doesn't have a lot of rights as it is, but once she gets married, her husband takes over and he is considered a person while she's be considered an extension of him. And she just doesn't see the benefits of getting married and she doesn't understand why she should, especially when she just wants to be independent and have her own company and be a boss basically and run her own life so the male protagonist has to convince her <laughs> to marry him which is so delightful this is definitely a twist on any historical romance I've ever seen and I highly recommend it I gave it five stars based on the concept alone it was so good and I can't wait to reread it sometime in the future oh oh my god you guys I'm done I'm done I'm done I'm done 12 books that I talked about in this video. I'm so sorry if this is so long. I've read 20 books, so I was just trying to pick the ones that I really enjoyed. I will link all of the books down below, all of their Amazon pages. You can definitely go check them out. And I don't want to ramble on for too much longer, but if you enjoyed this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. I'd really love if you subscribed and joined the Osh fam, and I will catch you all in my next video. If you want to hit the notification bell so that you will always get a notification every time I post a video, that would be great. And I will catch you guys next time. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. I digress, but those books really started my love for animals and reinforced my love for animals. But I would invite Stuart Little over for Christmas dinner. I think that would be a riot. Oh, we'd have to.